Hi, this is Rob Connery, and welcome to Mastering Git. In this screencast, I'm going to show you all the things that you need to know to be a Git ninja. I feel like I am its slave. And indeed, that is a problem with centralized source control systems, which things like Subversion and TFS and SourceSafe and others like SourceGear are. And with this, we come to reason number one why you should care about Git, and that is because Git is distributed. It's hippie source control. Your source repository is stored locally on your hard drive. You don't have a centralized system that lords over you. You commit your changes as you please. However, that's not to say there is no centralized way of using Git. There definitely is. There are shared branches. It's a core aspect of Git. Git was built by Linus Torvalds. Yes, that Linus. He is the guy who created Linux. And way back in 1991 through 2002, Linux, the kernel, was maintained mostly by using email, tarballs, which are kind of like zip files, and patches sent around and kind of collected and assembled. Not terribly efficient, but as Linus points out, he thought it was a lot more efficient than CVS. Linus is not a fan of CVS, which is the uh, precursor to subversion. It's time to build my own. And this is kind of crazy if you think about it. He decided to roll his own content management system, but he is Linus and a fairly, fairly bright guy. And so one of the things that he wanted to focus on was patching, making it really efficient. The other thing was to do whatever Subversion and CVS don't do. It's kind of interesting, but if you think of Git in that way, well, that's pretty much what it is. Fast and sort of anti-Subversion. This is the takeaway from this section. Git is the result of Linus's experience maintaining Linux. So the guy sat down and said, well, gosh, if I had to do source control as a result of maintaining one of the largest open source projects in the world, well, there you have it. That's what Git is. So this is where we'll start. We'll start with the core concept that separates Git from all the other solutions out there, and that is the concept of the snapshot. And this is very, very important because the way Subversion works, if you've used Subversion or any other uh, uh, centralized repository, is that it tracks the changes to a given file over time through the concept of revisions. So if you're thinking about uh, checking files in a Subversion, you have an initial import. Uh, you import the files in and, and you check them out to work on them. And then what Subversion does when you check them back in is it records the change or little deltas as you see right here. Git doesn't work that way. Git is a miniature file system in and of itself. So when you load files into Git, when you commit them initially, it actually takes a snapshot of your entire file system. It takes a snapshot of the files themselves and of the structure of your core root directory and subdirectories. And it blobs them all together, stores it in its object database. Every time you make a single change, it'll re-blob the file. Uh, but it won't reblob anything that you don't change. I'll talk more about that in a second. But as you move through time, instead of having changes recorded, you actually have snapshots recorded. Now, if you think about that, it's a much more efficient way when you're talking about speed. Well, let's take a look at a little bit of workflow here. How does this exactly go together? Well, on our left side, let's say this is the root of our website. And I have two directories in here. I have a bin and an images directory, and I have an index.html file. When I add these in to git using the commit command, what git actually does is it crumples up the index.html file into a blob, a binary large object. It also takes a look at the tree structure of the images and the bin directories, and it crumples those into their own objects. It takes those three binary objects and it runs it through a hashing algorithm called SHA1. It's like think, you can think of it like git hash code in .NET and it comes up with a 40 string value. This is called checksumming. Now, if you don't know what a checksum is, here's a nice definition pulled from Wikipedia. Suggest you pause this and read it. And what you'll see is that the process is built around the concept of integrity, making sure that the data that goes in is the same as the data that comes out. We are here now in our demo directory. How do we create a repository? You just type in git init. Pretty simple. And you hit enter. Well, what did this just do? Well, it kind of tells you right here. It added a filter. We double click in here, and we have it. Dot git. That is our repository. If you open this thing up and take a look inside, I'll explain what each one of these things is in a later, uh, later chapter here. 
Uh, but for right now, uh, just know that this is your repository. Okay, well, so now what am I going to do? I am going to now, let's just add in a readme file in here. So I'll just open up Notepad and a file called readme. Yes, I want to create a new file. Hello, world. And I'll save it. Control S, Alt F, X, out of there. Okay, now I have a file in there. So now what I can do is I can say, hey, get what's happening inside the working directory. And just ask it for the status. And it tells you, well, we have one untracked file. Boom, there it is. I realize that you can only push Microsoft developers only so far when it comes to working with console tools. And uh, that is not to be mean. That is simply because we are used to things like Visual Studio, which has a robust tooling aspect to it. So it does a lot of work for us. And the nice thing about it is it's pretty extensible. And so when you're working with something like Git, it makes it very, very simple. So what I'm going to show you right now is how to hook up Git to Visual Studio. And I'm going to do this in two ways. One, I'm going to show you that there is an add-on that you can use. Uh, but two, I'm going to show you how you can wire it in yourself, which is what I like to do. But for right now, what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to launch the Git console from here. So let's just call this uh, console for right now. Uh, launching an executable, you actually have to do a couple of steps. And the first thing you want to do is you want to launch the 64-bit uh, command shell. And what that's going to do is it, in turn, is going to call out to the git bin shell. So what I want to do is you want to pass this in as an argument, slash C, uh, and I don't know what that means. And it's going to pass in the location of the git bin shell. And it's going to pass it the, the switch here to log in interactive, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to make sure that we put this out in the solution directory. This is going to launch within the scope of the solution directory. But what I could do right now is I could just show you really quickly. I just say add and it's done. And then I could say commit. It pops up a message and I can say something like, oh, like I typically do, initial load. Hit OK. And there we can see everything's done. Well, the next thing I can do is ask for status. So let's do that as well. I'm going to add this in and just type in status. And then this is going to go again to the git executable. And I'm just going to type in status. And in the initial directory, one more time, it's going to be the solution directory. And I'll use the output window. Hit OK. So when I hit this, it's just going to tell me nothing to commit. But this is nice. It's reporting it right back into Visual Studio. So I don't need to exit out to a separate tool. Well, one of the final things I can do here is to work with git k. Because I like git k. I can use it a lot. So I think a prominent spot would be right here on the very, very end. And I can add in a command here, tools, external tools. And I'm going to add another one. We'll call it git k. And I will drop this in and call it git k command. It recognizes what's in there. Perfect. And for this, I'm going to pass in the dash dash all arguments. And I'm going to put it in the solution directory, making sure everything goes where it should go. Hit OK, git k. Now I open this up, up pops git k, already loaded up. Perfect.